Uh, my name is Dr. William Courtney. Uh, I'm involved in the raw use of cannabis as a dietary essential. Um, in that capacity, you can use 60 times more than you can tolerate if heated, and in that capacity, it's a very potent anti-inflammatory that will find a very broad population of interest in this country. I'm Donald Abrams, and I'm uh, Chief of Hematology Oncology at San Francisco General Hospital and a professor of medicine at the University of California, San Francisco. I do research in uh, medical cannabis applications. I mean, if cannabis were discovered in an Amazon rainforest today, people would be clamoring to make as much use of the, as they could of all of the potential benefits of the plant. I think, unfortunately, it carries with it, you know, a long, maybe not so long history of, of being a persecuted plant. Five years ago, I wouldn't prescribe uh, cannabis for a fellow I went to medical school with because I was such a skeptic. And now it's real clear to me that cannabis, it's a vegetable. It's not psychoactive until humans alter it chemically. No other animal alters it. So the whole psychoactive thing is a human um, aspect of the plant that has nothing to do with the 34 million years of evolution that the plant has. Um, it's captured uh, these molecules that help our body's regulatory system be more effective. And its bottom line is it's a, it's a dietary essential that helps all 210 cell types uh, function more effectively. Um, and so I never even refer to it as medicine anymore. It strictly is a dietary essential. It only becomes a medicine once you have a breakdown and a condition has become very serious and the system, your body is being overwhelmed. Then cannabis can be manipulated, i.e. heated, concentrated, to become a medicine. But uh, in its best form, it's a preventative. Um, and preventing diabetes is a lot better than trying to treat it. Preventing cancer is a lot better than trying to treat it. I think cannabis is a medicine that is uh, anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, and probably has some direct activity against cancer cells. So. Um, the federal patent is phenomenal. Uh, the Department of Health and Human Services since 2003 has had intellectual property on CBD and CBD is, you know, is a molecule that's coming out of the shadows from THC. It doesn't produce that psychoactive. The majority of my patients don't want to get high at 8 o'clock in the morning and be high all day long, um, but a lot of them do have arthritis, you know, car accidents, you know, autoimmune disorders, rheumatoid and they start out their day in pain and they're in pain most of the day long and so they're looking for relief but clarity and that's what these uh, eating the plant raw and that's you not only need CBD, CBD is, you know, is a non-psychoactive whether it's CBD acid which is how it's found in the raw plant or CBD which is what happens after you cook it or heat it or steep it or turn it into tea or something but THC acid is the real, is the real tricky molecule in the raw plant, totally non-psychoactive, phenomenally beneficial as a molecule. Uh, once it's heated, it turns into THC, and then the tolerable dose drops from hundreds of milligrams a day to 10. Um, and with 10 milligrams, you stimulate the CB1 receptor, you get that psychoactive effect, either dysphoria or euphoria, but you walk away from 99% of the benefits of this plant, which are bone remodeling, intestinal function, neural function, you know, inflammation control, cancer, precancerous detection. Um, you know, this plant can do phenomenal things, but not if you're taking 10 milligrams rather than, you know, the 600 milligrams that the FDA is currently approving as an investigative new drug. My name is Kristen Pisguski, and I went from being bedridden and on over 40 medications a day to control my health problems to being a uh, mother to being healthy, happy, and vital thanks to using green leaf um, that I juice on a daily basis. Yeah, I ha was diagnosed with lupus and rheumatoid arthritis when I was 16, and then interstitial cystitis, a bladder, painful bladder condition, endometriosis, um, cervical cancer. Uh, I was told I was sterile and would never have children and um, hypothyroidism, chronic infections. I've had 16 surgical procedures, and um, I'm resistant to most antibiotics and have chronic infections. 
and I can't take a lot of um, Western medicine drugs because of the allergies that I have. I also have asthma. Um, I'm allergic to most environmental factors and um, different skin rashes. And I have a broken back in three places. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> so how did, I mean, um, so how did you discover this, this new way of juicing? Um, I discovered cannabis was helpful for the conditions because when I would use, when I would smoke cannabis for pain, I had fewer infections. So I started to look into whether cannabis was doing more than just masking the pain. And I moved to California to be able to use cannabis legally, but I still didn't have the type of healing that I anticipated uh, with smoked and um, heated cannabis. So after talking to several cannabis physicians um, and attending different lectures, I found out that there's um, the THC acid and CBD acid that um, you get in the raw form have medicinal properties that are better at helping my immune system to communicate. So as soon as I began doing that, it took about six weeks and I was infection free and all of my conditions went into remission. And what many of my, many of my patients do is they, they plant a plant every day and they pick a plant every day. If, if you let the plant grow to a certain size, you may be able to use half a plant a day. So a plant therefore would last for two days. So therefore you need one plant every other day. So the total number of plants depends on whether you have a plant a day, a plant every other, or a plant every three days, depending on the space available. <clears throat> but most of them are trying to do this whole thing on a single 400 watt light. Um, and they use a fluorescent light to keep a mother alive and they produce a clone, they start a plant. They pick the whole plant, strip the leaf and flower, juice that. Good indication that the roots are also useful. Stalk is a little fibrous, can destroy, can bind up a lot of juicers and ruin the juicer because it's just so strong. So I generally strip the stalk and throw that away because it's just too fibrous. But um, juice that, it produces a small amount of juice, very concentrated, quite acidic. Yeah, that has to be diluted. Um, you can dilute it with fresh vegetable juice, fruit juice, or something that you buy off the shelf. The only time I've needed antibiotics in the last four years is when I was unable to do the juicing reg regime because I was overseas. And it was while I was pregnant um, for the first time with my daughter, Zahaya. And when I came back, I, was, I had a horrible sinus infection and they w were unable to treat it with three different antibiotics. And the rheumatologist at UCSF I was working with thought that I may need um, to go back on methyltrexate and prednisone and three weeks after I got home and I had been juicing again, um, everything cleared up and I didn't have to go on any of the drugs or take another antibiotic. And at this point, I'm developing strains. Uh, yesterday, you know, stumbled on a strain that's 22% um, CBD acid. Uh, the plant that I had the day before that was 1%. A absolutely phenomenal change in uh, the plant's chemical composition and particularly as it impacts, you know, are you violating federal patents if you're using this plant? I mean, if they're commercially going to use CPD, then you have to deal with the patent. But individual use is a dietary element. Um, the U.S. patent just is clear evidence as to why you want to eat this plant as a, as a leafy green vegetable and include it in your diet several times a day. I depend on right now on people who give me leaf because my partner is a cannabis physician and we worry about the legalities of growing our own right now and, and whether it could jeopardize his medical license. But um, we have a lot of patients that are able to grow less than 30 plants and this allows them a fresh plant every day for juicing. My number one project is to get the Convention 1 Treaty, which is a UN uh, committee that produced this treaty that all, I think there's 104 countries that have signed on to it, which says if you have, grow, possess, transport cannabis, you should be imprisoned. You know, that is the, the document that every country in this world pounds people into the ground, cuts their heads off, imprisons them. And so you take this information that um, unheated, it's not psychoactive, it's a vegetable that improves the function of your immune system and bone metabolism and musculoskeletal. It, once the world knows that this is, it's a vegetable, that's all it is. 
most important vegetable on the planet, then these, these uh, various things that are in place that prohibit people from having access uh, will change. And so my issue, my, one of my agendas now is to uh, try to get, it, um, get the con treaty amended to remove cannabis so that uh, cannabis can be available to everyone in the world as a, as, as a dietary supplement. And anyone who knows somebody who's sick, who has a loved one with an illness or themselves has suffered from one, understands that there are more important things to look at and we have to be able to adapt. If what we're doing doesn't fit with what's needed in the world today, if how we make our living isn't supporting, it's not sustaining people's health, then we need to be able to grow and adapt and change. You don't want to go from, you know, I guess a lot of incarcerations to suddenly, you know, it's a dietary essential. I mean, how do you make that leap? And so it, I'm hoping that we're in a, you know, in a phase where, you know, we're gradually letting go of yesterday's uh, nightmares and embracing uh, the fact that, you know, it's patented for its benefits, it's approved of by the FDA, and in fact is clearly a dietary uh, essential that should be in everyone's diets. And so, I'm hoping that the DEA, which you know is is lagging behind, will you know, on cue with the whole organization, decide that okay, well, let's go ahead and reschedule this because you know, clearly we can't have a patent on its utility and say it has no utility. I mean, the conflict is just it's uh, you know, patently absurd.